You can find and subscribe to the premium episodes of this podcast at pitch.supportingcast.fm. Welcome to Pitch, the launch episode. We'd like to thank you, firstly, for downloading and listening. And secondly, we'd like to explain how this podcast is structured so you know how to find the stuff that most interests you. Should we introduce ourselves? Yeah, we should. My name is Leah St. Marie. I'm a former investigative journalist turned filmmaker, mainly writing and sometimes directing. And I am Angel Dahoud Murphy. I am a filmmaker, writer, director, and actor. I live in Hollywood and started in the entertainment industry as talent and survived and have stuck around a while now and learned a bunch of other stuff over the past few decades. My focus now is primarily writing and directing. So Pitch is a two-part podcast. Normally, we will have a premium episode which will be accessible to our subscribers and in this premium portion, we will be featuring three writers, their introductions, their story pitches, and their personal connection to the story they're telling. We'll also then perform the first three pages of their scripts with actors, kind of like a radio play. So anyone who likes a pitch gets to hear the beginning of the script. If you really like their pitch and their pages, the writers also share their contact information for anyone looking to further collaborate or engage their services. For our first premium episode, we're actually sharing that for free. So everyone gets an idea of what we're offering. Now, what will traditionally be the second part of our podcast will always be free. In this portion, Lee and I discuss topics that should be interesting to writers, filmmakers, actors, producers, and anyone really who has a curiosity about what it takes to get a movie or TV show made or to get and maintain a writing career or uh, really any career in filmmaking. We interview industry insiders, and we have spirited discussions about storytelling, writing, and all the things we have experience with as it pertains to the industry. So make sure to check out our first premium episode, again, which is available for free. We both pitch stories we turned into scripts, and you'll get a great idea of what the subscriber episodes will be like for the future. Now, for the rest of this episode, we'll be covering a few topics. Yeah, and what are those topics, Leah? Our two topics are, why does this podcast exist and why are you listening to it? And what makes a good pitch? All right. And just how did this podcast come about? How did it come into being? This started because I got good and angry. And I got angry because this industry is built on doors. It feels like every door is closed to us. We have Mm. all of these great ideas. We both have friends in the industry who are screenwriters and filmmakers, and it has been just so very difficult for them to quote unquote, break into the industry. And so I was listening to one of our favorite um, screenwriting podcasts, Script Notes with John and Craig. Great show. Shout out John and Craig. And they were doing their Austin Film Festival and had Aileen Brosh McKenna on, who is just as lovely as can be. And she said it is the hardest that it has ever been in the history of the industry to break in. I was like, yes, it is. I have experienced that. I've been working for over a decade trying to break in. And what's frustrating is I have a feature film that sold to Shudder. I have another film that I made um, that is in the works of distribution. And I'm approaching agents, I'm approaching managers, I'm approaching production companies with my next project or projects. And everything is no. Slam, slam, slam. No, 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 no. I'm like, oh, that makes me mad. And I'm not the only one. We have friends who are experiencing the same thing. And so when I get angry, I get proactive. Okay. And what happened after you got angry and proactive? I was like, there has to be a way for us to facilitate the people who have pitches and have ideas to the people who want them. Instead of waiting to get invited into the room, let's make the room. And this is the room. Mm, This is the room. So I was like, let's do a podcast where we invite people on to pitch their ideas in the hopes of getting, getting the idea made, getting them connected to filmmakers that will help them get their idea made or having them find representation because the idea is so good. All of those things. We want all those wonderful things to happen. That's great. That's so what a, what a great product that has come out of your anger. Well, do you know the, the best part about this story? I don't know the best part. There, Should I know? There, there's a backstory. There's a backstory. So the backstory she's alluding to is that 
a few months back, I was like, Leah, we have to figure out how to pitch. So this is my why. Because, you know, you tell people you're a writer or you're writing something, right? Oh, a screenwriter and we're a dime a dozen in LA, blah, blah, blah. The jokes go on, right? Everybody's got a script. People inevitably ask, what are you writing? What, what's your script about? What are you working on? People in the industry, people out of the industry, family, friends back home, you know, they, they just throw the question out there. And so it, the instant you start telling them or answering that question, you're pitching yourself as a writer and the story you're working on. And what all too often happens before you really learn how to communicate effectively with your storytelling, people's eyes glaze over and they automatically tune out. And that, to me, is a problem to solve. So I was like, Leah, we got to figure out how to pitch. You've had a couple things produced. I have had a couple meetings. I've had you know good reviews on the blacklist from some scripts. Uh, what else can we do? Some people say you don't have to know how to pitch. You're, if your writing is undeniably good, you will get produced. And then I've also heard the story that, you know, readers give feedback to a writer that says, you know, your script was amazing. The characters were wonderful. The plot was perfect. It was all the things that you could ever want in a screenplay. Unfortunately, this year we're only buying crap. <laughs> so how do you, how do I, how does Leah, how do we as writers check as many boxes for employing ourselves and making fans in the industry with ourselves as storytellers. And so I was like, we got to learn how to pitch. We got to practice it. We have to drill it. We have to treat this like our livelihoods depend on it. In addition to the other work we're doing. And Leah was like, I don't want to do it. Leave me alone. Get away from me. I'm going to go write. And I was like, no, let's do it. So we broke it down and we found there's not a lot of examples out there. There's hardly any examples and all of the examples are so vastly different. Right. So there's a lot of places that tell you what to do during your pitch, but there are few examples out there that I have found mm -hmm. of screenwriters pitching their ideas. And that is precisely what I was looking to bone up on. Yeah. So we found a couple and we'll talk about our experiences with, you know, observing really cool pitches uh, in another episode. But mm -hmm. I was like, yeah, sure. Let's do it. You want to do a podcast? Great. I planted the seed months before <laughs> you came up with this great new idea. <laughs> All by myself. <laughs> All by yourself. So let's do it. So here we are. And today mm -hmm. we're talking about the second topic, which the is the second topic, which is what makes a good pitch. And this is opinionated, so it's not objective. It's subjective. I have not sold a pitch, full disclaimer. I have not. Well, I'm iffy on, have I pitched? Have I not pitched? Well, you've talked about a script to someone in the industry, so you've pitched. Yeah. Right? By definitions, maybe it's not a formal, hey, sit down and we want to hear mm -hmm. your pitch. Right. We're not being hired on assignment just yet to like hear our pitch on a property that's owned by someone. So we have spoken about our scripts and our stories and our process and whatnot to people in the industry, which I would consider a moment that we should be selling. But before we get into this. Yes. Ah, uh, the thought left me. It's gone. I, it's had a, gone? I had a thought. Yeah. I'll do a quick filler. I did pitch when we went to Italy. That's right. You I did. pitched in the room with producers. I just, I forget sometimes the things that I do because I've done so much. <laughs> Such a storied, <laughs> storied career. <laughs> yeah. And how did you find pitching in Italy to people who didn't speak your language and whose language you did not speak? Well, I did that dumb thing where you speak just a little bit louder, thinking you'll be better understood. No. Did you really? <laughs> did it work? No, I didn't do that. <laughs> no, it went, it, I think it went very well. They're interested. They've emailed me. We've e emailed back and forth all this year, um, landing on casting decisions and grant decisions and money decisions, which is always the thing. Uh, did your thought come back to you? No, it's gone. Gone forever. Which is fine. Let's move on to the You'll, to the second topic of today. Well, listeners are missing out because it was the best idea ever. I saw it, his eyes. It just came back to me. So the, the other reason why we wanted to do this podcast was not just selfishly. We mm -hmm. have a lot of friends. Um, talented friends. Talented friends who are writers, directors, et cetera, who we wanted to maybe give a platform to. Mm -hmm. And I don't think, and I could be wrong, but I don't know of a repository for pitches. No. I know they're highly individual, generally. 
But uh, it's like, let's let's build the repository a la the blacklist for some of the best unproduced scripts mm -hmm. in the industry. Let's be that unicorn. Let's be the pipeline. Mm -hmm. Let's be the repository, repository unicorn pipeline. I With think we should name our podcast. Repository Unicorn. R-U-P? R-U-P? This is terrible. <laughs> we should not be Rep. allowed to name anything. <laughs> but let's let's give everybody who wants to get their story out there an opportunity. That's all that anybody ever really asks for when they write something. How, how do I get it out there? Please give me a chance. This is that chance. And maybe foolishly, I assumed that the people who already listen to pitches all day want to listen to a few more in their car on their way to the office or on their way home. So if we can connect stories and storytellers with the people who want to buy those stories and employ those storytellers, mm -hmm. let's get an easy, efficient way of getting pitches to people who hear pitches. Yes. So the first part of our podcast, the subscriber part, which if you're not subscribing, you should really listen to because we have writer introductions, writer pitches, writers wise. So if you're a writer curious about that stuff it's a really great thing to listen to it's an education it's an education it's been educational for me to observe other people same pitching same okay all right so our second topic today what are we what are we on about what makes a good pitch what makes a good pitch i have ideas well you alluded to something earlier that mm. they're different yeah it's, it's it's opinion it's opinion right this is these are our opinions well it's not just our opinions but it's also when you go into a room, you're catering your pitch to what that room wants. Just All a right. little bit. You're tweaking. So the first thing that goes into a, a good pitch or a great pitch is read the room or know your audience. Yes. Know your audience. Mm, okay. Important. Yes. Great. What else would you say makes a great pitch? Well, we have this in the podcast. We have the writers and filmmakers come in and ask, we ask them, what is your why? Why are you specifically writing this story? Mm -hmm. So I think that again, subjective, the closer you can get to your personal reason for telling the story, the more sellable the idea becomes because no one else in the world can tell this story, but you, it's like your territory. This is my castle. You went in, come on in. So for me, I interpret that when, cause I've heard that before. It's what is my unique worldview and my unique connection? And how can I communicate that in an entertaining, engaging way so they trust that I am the person to tell this story? Mm -hmm. Which I have to admit, when I first learned that this was requisite, I was a little floored and a little surprised because you hear the things, only write what you know, which I've heard debunked by huge writers. And then I've also heard, you know, yes, you can write anything. Yes. So if you have a connection to something that you don't necessarily know, but your your point of view on it is compelling and you can communicate that in an entertaining way, I think that works. Your why. And this is something that when you and I did the Sundance thing, they like they really wanted us to hone in on exploring that why and making it as concrete as possible. That's right. I remember that. Yeah. What else do you think makes a good pitch? I think clarity oh, yes. is massive for me. Mm -hmm. And I think clarity comes from being able to orient the listener to what the heck you were talking about. And you're talking here like the emotional geography of the character. Um, sure, that is part of it. So getting a full picture of who the character is. Mm -hmm. The character is this and this and this and this other thing and then hopefully all of those things paint a comprehensive picture now everybody's going to be different in how they describe their characters but for me it's 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 i don't know i i, can't, I guess i can't articulate formulaically what all goes into me knowing that the listener should be oriented based on what i just said I don't quite understand it. I think my pitch for Hammond mm -hmm. has that, mm -hmm. but I couldn't break it down for another character. I, I maybe I will in a in a in an upcoming podcast. Maybe I'll give myself some homework. But giving the listener an easy to understand and easy to anticipate description of the character, 
and then clarity about the story world. And hopefully if I can do those two things well, if I've constructed the story well, the listener can kind of anticipate how this character, which they understand, and this story world, which they understand, will come into conflict. And so I've always, I've always suggested that writing for me is a little like algebra. You give them four, you say plus X equals nine. And then the audience solves for X. Well, this is something that you do in pitching is when you're pitching something, as soon as the room starts talking back to you with questions, with suggestions, you know you have them because they're engaged. Mm. So it's that component of I'm pitching this story. Suddenly there's excitement in the room. You, you know that you're in a good standing point. What if they don't ask questions? Well, it's it could be one of two things. Either uh, the story doesn't engage them or you just that person, you cannot read that person and they have a different way of doing things. Or they're thinking about what they're going to have for lunch. They're thinking about all those ham sandwiches. Or they ask you what your story is about, but they didn't really care. Or they didn't care. Yeah. Which is fine, but it's still an opportunity for you to try to, I mean, entertain them. Right. So I think another component of pitching for me is like, are they entertained? Are they entertained? And this goes to something that can be very difficult to do or trained to do is be charming in the room. Mm. You know, how are you, how are you specifically going to go in and pitch this story? For those people out there who don't feel like they're charming in a room, Mm -hmm. are they, are they, you know, are they out of luck? They're not out of luck because you can at least be, I don't want to say interesting because that's such a boring word, but compelling. Compelling. And I would, I would say that, and I've heard screenwriters talk about this, working screenwriters, huge showrunners, you know, people who've written movies say, you don't have to be great at pitching. Mm Mm-mm. I met with a friend the other day who's a showrunner. She just wrote a big Disney movie. She said that some of the best writers she knows are not necessarily the best at pitching. And some of the people best at pitching are good writers, but their pitching far outstrips their writing ability. And they have careers. So, But what's great about what you said is two things. If you're not... The strongest at writing, that's okay, because you're really great at pitching. And people who who like pitch for a living really know how to do that. It's like a sport, right? Mm-hmm. But the other thing that you, that you said that I think should give a lot of our audience hope is it's okay if you're not good at pitching because it's the story that sells. So having a good story is the basis of all of this. Agreed, 100%. Great story, well told. Yes, What else would you say makes a great pitch? Do you have like a list? Anything off the top of your head? I mean, I do have a list. So because my background is as an investigative journalist, we're always told to have a hook for the story. Like what makes a story interesting to the audience when you're in the room pitching to your editor, you have to have that hook. Okay. So if your story has a hook, that's even better. Which is, I mean, I I don't want to generalize, but it's screenwriting or storytelling 101 is what's, what's the hook? What makes this story unique or interesting? Yeah. Would you say that exists more in screenwriting than in like novels or other forms of writing or? I wouldn't, I wouldn't say, I think it's more prevalent in screenwriting. Um, I think novels are a different beast, but that's just my opinion. Okay. I've only written one novel, so small opinion. I was doing a little bit of research earlier and the Harvard Business Review was talking about pitching and they were framing it up in a business sense. Mm. But I think it, the takeaway that I found was highly applicable for what we do and what we're doing here is you have to solve the problem that they have. The people who you're pitching to have a problem. And if you can solve that problem, then maybe they won't buy your story because it's not the story they're looking for, but they can, they'll, they'll buy you, right? They'll be your fan. They'll remember you. And I think I just, as we were talking about it, figured out what the universal problem in the room is okay lay it on us life can suck life can be boring so people need to be entertained Mm -hmm. can you entertain them and make them feel something special i think that's the universal problem in any room where and I, i could be wrong but i think in any room where people are trying to listen to a story The universal thing they want is to be entertained and to feel something from that story. 
Yeah, I mean, yeah, the whole basis of the human race relies on empathy and the way that empathy moves. The podcast you shared with me the other day is empathy moves and grows through storytelling. Mm. And we have like our race is kind of different from all of the other species in the world because our race is homo neurons, which is we rely on narration. Wow, I didn't know that. I'd never even heard that that word before. There's a whole book about it. This is why she has a master's degree and I'm <laughs> I'm, I'm somewhere on the college dropout spectrum. No. <laughs> and we're both writers. Yeah, there we go. No, I love I love this too because when you go into a room, if you're selling an idea, they don't like the idea, but they like you, mm -hmm. then one of the things that makes a pitch good is your ability to pivot. Okay, so your ability to pivot. So the ability to pivot. Yeah. And that could work in two ways. It could be, I have the story, but they're looking for just something a little bit different. And so you're like, oh no, my story is about that. And then you make all of these tweaks within the next two weeks. You're like, here you go. Or it's, or it's, oh, that story, we already have something similar, which I have experienced. We already have something in the pipeline that is that genre or is kind of that story, but I like your writing and I like you. What else do you have? And there are, there are, rumors around Hollywood about a lot of things, mm. but also specifically for our purposes about people who are amazing in the room to pitch. Yeah. And the few people I have observed pitching scripts or stories that I think are amazing doing that one thing, I, I recognize that those people are amazing in the room, quote unquote, I was watching, you know, the, the rehearsal process for one writer as he was getting ready to pitch. And then there's another kind of a well-known guy around town who, who is rumored to be amazing in the room. And there's some examples of his stuff out there. And I'm like, oh yeah, when they tell me or, you know, a room, the story, I'm like, there is something captivating about their performance coupled with a great story with a good hook mm -hmm. and me being clear about what the heck is going on. Mm -hmm. And the, the fun thing for me was even to see the mistakes oh, and yeah. not care. Yeah. And some of these pitches, I'm like, oh, there's some, there's some logic mistakes. There's some storytelling contradictions mm -hmm. when they're going through plotting and then this happens and then this happens and they feel this way about that. And I'm like, oh, there are contradictions in there, but it didn't matter because I was like, yes, I want to buy you as a storyteller because I am entertained I'm, a, I'm i'm alive i'm 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 awake and curious about you telling me stories i like that and we're going to hear about that story about the man that you heard pitch on another episode yes i will share that in another episode that'd um, be great and you've got some i've got a story you've got a story yeah i got a story on another episode on another episode all right so so far for what makes a pitch good or great mm -hmm. we've got a hook we've got clarity what else do we have we have the character orientation. Character orientation, part clarity, yeah. Um, I think uh, being charming or being, what was the word that I used? Being charming or being... Charismatic? No, the other way. If you're not charming, it's okay because you can also be compelling. Interesting. Compelling and interesting. Compelling. I think something that also helps is images. Images, okay, so... So if you're speaking about images in a room, you'd be like, imagine a woman at the start of the film and she's kneeling before the frame of a door and she's beating her head off the door. And instead of flesh coming off, it's bits of technology. Is this a story you're working on? Well, this is great. It this is, image yeah. is so... See, wow. it's hooked, right? So okay. you have to start with what is the image? Don't just focus on the character goes from point A to point B. Put your characters and orient them in whatever the geography is and like build up to the surprise. So if I told that story, but I if I revealed oh, there's an android in this story and she's banging her head off the ground. Not not as strong, I don't think. So if you save the surprise until the end, I think that works really well for how do you move about and tell a story in a compelling or charming way. Okay, all right. And I would say that being compelling and being charming and being interesting are, are, are vague concepts that... Mm. An individual, if, if someone said that to me at the beginning of my writing career, I would be confused. Oh. I'd probably go and hide because <laughs> I just didn't innately understand what goes into those things. Mm -hmm. But there's a way to break those things down. Oh, what 
does being charming or compelling actually mean? You know, and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go into it now, but for those of you out there who may not feel like I am the most charming or compelling or interesting person in verbal conversation, but my writing is great, do not despair. Right. The cream rises to the top, right? What's the saying? It is. That's exactly the saying. The cream rises to the crop, right? <laughs> that's close. <laughs> if you had to break down either of those three words, compelling, interesting, charming, what would you say? Somebody's listening. They're 16 years old. They're going to grow up 24 years old. They're moving to Hollywood after grad school or whatever. They're like, okay, I'm ready. I've listened to this podcast. And Angel, I remember he told me, before I go in the room, I have to remember to be this. And this is how I do this. Compelling charming or interesting mm -hmm. i think you got to be compelling and i think if you're compelling it it contains interesting i think interest is part of compelling mm -hmm. i think you cannot have charm without a great story like if i go in there and i'm just charming and they're they're looking for writers they're like great he seems charming but his ideas about our story that we would maybe hire him to write or his own story was lacking in compelling detail or interesting or it just didn't seem like lovely human being but i didn't feel like this person was going to deliver mm -hmm. on the story mm -hmm. this is all speculation i could be wildly wrong there could be an executive listening to this <laughs> that's like no we want charm you know we want but i don't know like i don't think people want charming writers i think they want writers who can do the job within the constraints they're given so like yeah. you have four weeks to deliver a draft and you have to take all our notes and it better be great. Yeah. And so if you're compelling, I think compelling, again, has interesting as a component of it. Um, so what would then compelling be? Man, we're getting into the like nuts and bolts of storytelling. Yeah. And human connection, right? It's all, I mean, you told me the other day what makes, what's the foundation of a good story or a great story? It's heart. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot there's a lot of things that go into my ponderings about what makes a great story mm -hmm. people say story is about change people stay you know say story is about emotion it's about connection and i think it is about all of the things any writer or people who've studied writing say it's about mm -hmm. it is yeah and it's finding a way to from that soup of all these things find a way to make it interesting i mean compelling what a, what a difficult concept to break down i know irony is compelling mm. i know recognizable <laughs> characters doing behavior that is ironic is compelling like for instance oh he's a cop mm -hmm. but he's a bad cop mm -hmm. right cops are supposed to be although in this day and age there's a lot of like you know hollabaloo around police behavior cops traditionally are supposed to uphold the law and enforce moral behavior on a societal level so if you have a cop that is doing something bad, okay, I'm interested. There's an ironic opposite in there, right? But if you have a cop who's doing something bad, but he has um, a wife or a daughter who wants them to be good, then there's a struggle. So irony and a struggle, Yeah. right? But I'm also thinking about going back to being in the room. There was something that um, David C. in France said, and he's the guy who did... Uh, between the pines, between two pines, between the pines, between two ferns. No. I think it's Zach Galifianakis. <laughs> um, no, uh, David C. and France did Blue Valentine. Okay. And he's talking about being an audience member and sitting through a movie, and you're in that moment where the film ends, and you're still in a dark theater. What is it that you want to feel as an audience? And he said, a lot of times this day and age, he feels cheated because there are so many happy endings and happy unrewarding endings. So I think part of the process of, of pitching is thinking of who your audience is in that theater and what you want them to feel and translating that and making the audience in the room feel that feeling. So you've got a target of, I want them to feel yeah. wrecked or elated mm -hmm. or Think of the emotion. Despair, right? Think of the audience. Yeah. Okay. You are a master craftsman telling a story and story is about emotion. I would, I would, I would clarify that stories are an attempt to elicit emotion mm -hmm. out of the audience that's attached to meaning or catharsis. Oh, catharsis. Is how I would, I would deepen that because. Yes, we need a whole different episode about catharsis. I mean, it's why it's, it's, it's in part, large part why I have found 
my way to writing because mm-hmm. there's 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 catharsis for me and hopefully for audience and I you know I think I, I go back to think about some of my favorite movies oh list some of them okay so some of my favorite movies um, Sunset Boulevard one great movie that's top five for me I'll, I'll I'll name my top five great Sunset Boulevard and this is in no order but they're all in the top five Razor Red Lanterns yes it's a great Chinese film from the nineties. City of God, Brazilian film, brilliant. Um, Beasts of the Southern Wild is a film that I saw that I I did not know how they how they did it. Yeah, a lot of films I watch, I'm like, oh, I can, you know, they did this camera angle, that camera angle, those are camera tricks, you know, like I I can break down the the pieces that I'm seeing. Beasts of the Southern Wild, I did not understand how the hell they did that movie. Yeah. And then uh, <laughs> Black Swan. That's a good one. Black Swan. I mean, I must have seen that in the theaters four or five times. Like, and I own it. I have it on DVD. I have a couple DVDs of it. It is, it, it, it blew my mind. That's, that's a film that has some great story engines. Yeah, it really does. What about you? Top five? Top, sure. Give me, give me Somebody, top five. So I was on set back in 2007 with, um, I was doing stand-in work in Pittsburgh And the writer of the film, uh, Josh, we're still friends today. Josh asked me, oh, Leah, what's your favorite film? I said, let me make you a list. I came back the next day. I was like, I couldn't pick one. And there was 800 movies on the list. But to give you background, so I used to be a projectionist. You did not. You did not. I did. 800 800 movies on a list overnight? Yes. Wow. But I used to be a projectionist. And growing up, my dad owned at separate times two different video stores. And he had so many VHSs and Betamax in our house. So I watched everything. I watched everything. But I'll give you top five. I won't give you 800. Okay, so we'll each do five this episode. Next episode, we'll do five more, which would be in our top 10. Oh, great. I like that. How's that sound? Uh, sounds good. The Fall. Oh. Which yeah. I adore and own. Cool Hand Luke. Yeah. It's a good yeah, one. That's a good one. His Girl Friday. Oh, classics. Yep. Kill Bill, which I consider volume one and volume two, uh, one movie, which we have to still rewatch the second part of. Yeah. Yeah. And, oh, I always reserve space for the last one. Which one should I pick? What movie should I pick? I don't know. You've got 800 to choose from. Um, Ex Machina. Oh, Ex Machina. That's a... So good. That's a good movie. So Good. And I read the script uh, not too long ago at the WGA library, and the script is phenomenally well written. On a future episode, I want to get in to the discrepancy between reading a story on the page Mm -hmm. and then seeing the movie and then one being better than the other one. That phenomenon. Oh, that's a that's a good episode. Because I have read a bunch of scripts and then I went and saw the movies for the first time and I was like, they messed it up. <laughs> At which point a friend of mine was like, well, you need to be a director. And I was like, okay. Yeah. Or like, I'm a fool and this is the best they do. You know, movie making is incredibly difficult. And what one person sees on the page, mm-hmm. it's like a book. You know, a lot of people say, oh, well, the book was better. Yeah. So I would love to talk about like that phenomenon yeah. of they did it. It was way better than the script or it was way worse. Yeah. Let's cool. talk about that. All right. Okay. So... Your top five, my top five. Yeah. I would love if people would tweet at us. Oh, yeah. And let us know if they've seen any of the movies in either of our top fives, what they think of them. And then tweet at us and let us know what your top five are. Yeah, I would love to know everybody's top five. Yeah, I'm always looking for good recommendations. Always. Always. It's the most serious I've ever heard, Leah. When you talk about films, I get deadly serious. No, just when you said always. Oh, when I use the word always... (laughs) About tweeting. (laughs) All right. So what makes a good pitch? In summary, what would you say? Image. Image. Images. Images. Clear images. Strong images. Strong images. Character orientation, like you were saying. Orientation for the listener about characters and everything. It's just clarity and orientation for the listener. A hook. A hook. A story hook. A story hook. And we didn't even talk about surprises or battles, but I think what we talked about is great. Mm-hmm. Um, how you pitch in a room, charming, compelling, be compelling. Sure. And then the main thing is just have a good story. Have a good story. And then I think 
maybe a, a double hookage is your personal hook to it. And then your personal hook to that story. And the story I will share about one of the mentors I worked with working on his pitch has an incredibly compelling yes. personal hook along with an incredible an incredible story hook. Yes. So maybe there's a double hook phenomenon. Ooh. Yes. And then compelling, you're going to have to, you know, break down, you know, watch. I think, I think if people really wanted to like work on this, what I would say to them is find some Ted talks, mm -hmm. find some shark tank pitches, mm -hmm. find examples of people pitching short form five, 10 minutes max, and pay attention to the people who seem compelling to you and who don't seem compelling to you. And then break down, see if you can figure out what the differences are. And then let us know. We'd love to get some listener feedback about the research y'all have done because we're trying to help people get better at pitching, better at storytelling. Yeah. And we love, you know, learning as well. And we love getting help as well. And if you have any suggestions for episodes you'd like us to talk about, suggest those. All right. Well, is there anything else? My Twitter handle is Leah Welch 19. That's one nine. And I have Twitter, but I, I haven't used it in a while. So I got contact me. <laughs> you can reach Angel at Leah Welch 19. <laughs> no, I have a Twitter. I have a Twitter. It's, I'm out there. I'm, I just got to reactivate my account if Elon Musk doesn't grenade the whole thing. Yeah. This has been really great. If you're just a listener for the free portion. We hope you really enjoyed it. We hope you get something out of it. Yes. And if you ever want to listen to the subscription version, we highly recommend it. One, we would love the support, but also we pitch. We personally pitch. We have friends pitching. Mm -hmm. We've got a really great structure and we kind of include everything. Like we ask the writers their why. They have a three minute pitch. We have a little writer introduction. So there's a lot of opportunities for you to glean examples of good to great to all sorts of pitches and further the catalog, further the examples to expand the examples of pitches that you're consuming so you can get better in yours. And if you listen and you have any tips for us, please share. Please do not hesitate to reach out. And what's great about subscribing is a percentage goes to the nonprofit Young Storytellers that's based here in Los Angeles. We got charitable causes. We got educational content. Mm -hmm. And we've got compelling, entertaining story time, basically is what we're doing. Yes. Great. Hopefully this all helped you become better pitchers. Hey, so again, I'm Angel. And I'm Leah. And you should check out the free premium episode where we give you three pitches, writer intros, the reasons or why the writers chose to write these stories, and then the scripts, the first three pages read aloud by our lovely actors. And then contact info for each writer. And over the next few episodes, we'll be talking about everything from the pitch development process to pitch materials to have ready, such as Bibles, pitch decks, budgets, conflicting advice about creative endeavors, including writing and pitching. Oh, let's talk about my shutter deal. Yes, let's talk about it. And guests. Maybe we have some guests. And on that note. Cheers from Hollywood. Cheers from Hollywood. Cheers from Hollywood.